Hello and welcome to another episode of Inside Marine. Uh, today, I'm really excited to be chatting to our to our guests, um, and he is a innovator, an entrepreneur, a multiple offshore race winning champion, and a very passionate environmentalist. Um, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Jerome Watts to the show. Hi there, Jerome. Thank you. Hi, James. Thank you for the opportunity you give me here. Isn't it really nice? Yeah, great. No problem at all. Well, um, I think the opportunity is mine today. You're, you, you have a fascinating background and, um, uh, and have, have, have clearly achieved a huge amount in your, in your life <laughs> so far. And, and I know that you're not slowing down anytime soon with, with huge plans uh, ahead. So we usually start off uh, our, our discussion going, going right back to the, to the beginning. And, yeah. and you know, I, I would really like to hear you know, how you got into the industry and, and, and what really drew, drew, drew you into it initially and, and really kind of the journey up to now. Well, it's kind of a funny because when I was 15 years old, we had a, a, the school teacher, he asked us, what do you want to become when you grow up? And I said, I want to build boats. That's basically what I said. I want to build boats. And later on, school, and one guy in our class, he wants to be a climber. And the other one wants to be a police officer. Um, but he said, I'm too lazy for that. Well, and we had a school reunion. And it was, let's say, 10 years ago or something. said, well, what do you do? So I'm building boats. And he said, well, what do you do? He said, no, well, I'm a climber. Uh, so actually he was. And the other one is a police officer in the Caribbean. So, so, <laughs> so there's three guys who actually did what they, uh, what, what they always wanted to do. And for me to just step into the industry was more, I was working at corporate organizations, which I really didn't like. Uh, there's a big lack of passion. It's all very much of profit-driven, profit-driven. So you work really hard. And at the end of the year, they said, well done, you do. And then next year, up plus 10%. And so I'm already working really hard. So I thought, well, this is not going to work. Um, so I did a transatlantic race from Cape Town to Rio de Janeiro in 2003. It was my first transatlantic. Um, sailed it with a team of eight and won the race, which was kind of lucky more than that we were actually so extremely good. <laughs> Sometimes you need some luck in order to get somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, covered the ocean in 20 days, covering 4,000 nautical miles. Been sailing really all my life since I was really young so it was always something i was from dinghies to keel boats and then offshore and so on and so transatlantic never did it so i want to do it and did it gave up my job um, and start to build boats because what i did is basically when people start to challenge me you like do you want to do this again i said well i would but 20 days is pretty boring and it's pretty long so if i want to do it i want to do it in 16 days and people say you can't and I always live by a certain rule. The ones who say you can't are the reasons why you should. So I gave my job and that was my first step into the industry. So I started to work on the development of a boat uh, to do this race again and cover it in 16 days, which I did. Wow, incredible. Yeah, yeah. so that was kind of, uh, well, the, the first one was, was lucky. The second time we, we did it on a 37 foot boat with a tiller. Because, uh -huh. well, I didn't have more money to build a boat like that. And I thought that I would make it really big, but every week it became a, week, a meter shorter because so my, my pockets are not deep enough. <laughs> but we covered the race in 16 days. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So we were first over the line and handicap owners as well. Amazing. I'm, yeah. I'm what, I'm what, I'm what, can you remember the sort of the, you know, I, I, doing those sort of races and challenges on a, on, mm -hmm. on a budget is, is, is always, mm -hmm. is always difficult, especially if you want to try and break records, you've got to be really clever with, 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 yeah. and then yeah, you know, yeah. just, just talk me through, you know, what was the, the, any of the key things that you were able to do to the boat or the design that, that, well, basically what you, what you have is this is almost like driving a car, you know, when you have a certain feeling when you think, okay, well, when the tires are a little bit better or the suspension or something, or you got the same with the boat. So especially when you cover 4,000 nautical miles, you, you feel in your fingertips that if the rudder would be a little bit deeper, if it would kill a little bit more deeper, if the boat would be lighter, if it had a little bit more volume in the stern, um, if you fly bigger kites, if we have a longer bow spread, all these kind of things are, are, are things you, you not automatically, not deliberately, let's say this, but you, when you sail it, well, if you sail it off a, off a, if you rocket off a wave, if you surf off a wave, 
Mm. The, the, it's nice when the boat can can accelerate a little bit quicker or these kind of things. You always process all these information in your in your head. So automatically you gain a lot of data covering four thousand miles on how you can improve speed. It's it's basically very simple. And of course, you've kept that 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 kind of boat building and design theme going, yeah. sort of continuing through through your career. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, after your success in the in the race, what what came next? Um, start to build boats because my basic idea was to build one and then sell it and then do something else. Uh, but yeah. well, it was basically it's sort of yeah, addictive is maybe a good word for it, to create something and actually when it starts to work. So you start with an idea, you have things in your head, you work it out, you work with an architect, it becomes a render and like, oh, wow, and the render turns into a, a, a mold and the mold turns into a boat. And it, so it's, it's a, the, that process is really beautiful. To create something is fantastic, especially when it works. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, and moving more into the... So, uh, you know, the, the, the current day, obviously you're still now, you know, the, the founder and, or, 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 of, of another boat building company. You've, you've had yep. a number of design offices and boat building firms before. And mm -hmm. I, I understand the, 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 you know, the process is addictive and I, and, and my background is a boat builder. So yeah. I can, okay. I can, to I can totally uh, relate to that, but yeah. you, you're also, um, obviously have a, a passion for business as well and, 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 and leading your own businesses. And, uh, yeah. so what, yeah, what's it, the what is the motivation there? I think the motivation is not automatically that, that I started a business or, or something new mm. because the profit was automatically my goal, because I think you can make a lot of money of it out of it. It's something which I, I sincerely want or, mm. or, or concerned about like for example now the sustainable mission has been years of investment or investing time and money and efforts to make something before you actually can go to market it's something which is it's this part maybe of entrepreneurship that's a thing for sure but it's something which is driven by sincere passion and not by something else yeah and just just going going back over over the last i guess few few years i mean is there been any particular you know big influence on 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 your career uh, you know up to date and and mm -hmm. over the past that's really kind of helped sort of spur you on into the projects that you you've been doing oh yeah 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 well basically because i've, I've got a long history in building the boats and building up a brand and 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 still still up to date mm -hmm. i'm still in contact with all the owners of these yachts i built and so over well not all of them because there was something like 600 boats built over this period of time but many of them, they still send me a message or ask me for some advice or share that they want to race it's up till today. That's fantastic. So, uh, but when it comes to, um, to the future, yeah, well, the, the, the network you have in the industry is pretty big, mainly in sailing. So power boats is, is it's like skiing and, and, uh, and, and the snowboarding. These are two, two complete different things. And in the powerboat industry, it's kind of different, diff different because people actually don't know me. So now, I was, for example, as an example with my Golding. Um, not, well, every sailor knows my Golding. So I was walking with my Golding over the Southampton boat show, and everybody's hi, Jerome, hi, Mike, hi, Jerome, hi, Mike, hi, Jerome, hi, Mike. And we came with powerboats in. Who's Mike? Who's Jerome? <laughs> no, <pretty laughs> <funny. laughs> it's really funny. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, but basically, when, industries, yeah. it is. Yes. But when you're in the industry, you have a lot of connections, suppliers, uh, relations to, to build something up. It's, it's a, it's a fair, well, as you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big industry, but it's on the other end, very small. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and sort of throughout the journey of, of the various businesses and the various boats, you know, uh, what are you, what are you seeing kind of over the, over previous years, the, the kind of the big changes are in, you know, in the industry? Yeah. The last couple of years, uh, there is, well, basically since the start, let's say since 40 years, there's not so much of innovation. I think with the ultimate boat company, uh, which is, we have exo technology and the ultimate boat company is a sister company of exo technologies. Hmm. I think, and it's not preaching out of our own church, not at all. Um, but we've achieved hull designs, which are at the cutting edge of power boating, which is not my automatically my expertise. Uh, yet uh, it has better fuel consumptions. Uh, it has hydraulic lifts, and the boat lifts itself up in a horizontal way. 
you can do 45 knots and do a hard turn and the boat won't wipe out. Um, it's a John Moxham hull design, which is a, an, an architect from, I think he's now 86 years old or something. So he came on his wow. motorcycle to the Southampton boat. So brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I think what we, we are as a company extremely innovative in composite materials, designs, um, uh, solutions all over, uh, mm -hmm. up till military purposes, up till uh, offshore purposes, uh, safaris, these kind of things. Mm. And that you don't see so much. For example, if you see the basic rib, if you see a rib hull, they're since 30 years the same, uh, 40 yeah. years the same. Nothing. I, 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 yeah, I mean, that's really interesting because, you know, from, from one angle, you, you certainly see incredible innovation, don't you? But in a very, very small space, if you're mm -hmm. looking at, I don't know, the, the America's Cup type, type in innovation. Sailing, yes. And, yes. In sailing, yeah. you know, but, but interesting to hear that maybe not so much at a more general level across, across the industry. No, Why no, do you no. think that is? Yeah, well, you see indeed, you know, you see the, the, in the sailing industry, you see much more foiling and you see now sometimes some power boats, they, they come up and they foil a little bit and so on. The, that, that innovation is impressive, of course. If you see an, an, an America's Cup boat, it's absolutely insane. You know, even for me as a, as a high-performance yacht, it's for me difficult to see if they go up or down winds because they're always going up wind, these things. They, they are so fast. You cannot see if they tick or jibe. It's, it's almost it's very difficult to spot. Yeah. But um, these innovations are really helping towards the future of boating. You know, that's the same as Formula One. They came up with their 16 volves and their turbo engines and special suspensions and so on. It came later in Honda Civics and, and, and so on and so on. So it is a very good that these uh, races and platforms are there to innovate. Yet, if you see the basic sailing yacht, it's still made of, uh, of fiberglass. It's still made of carbon fiber. It's still made in a very old fashioned way, even if you infuse or whatever, it's still old school. Mm. Um, for example, a, a, a power boat to make is maybe 2000 labor hours, a uh, Porsche 911 turbo, uh, 49 hours. Wow. And a Volkswagen Polo, 18 hours. So it is still an industry, which is, well, I always joke about it. That it's a little bit Flintstone. It's, that's, that's not really how it is because there is a lot of innovations going on. But I think and towards sustainability, that's where this industry really needs to be shaken up. Yeah. And, and, and um, why do you think this is? What, what's holding people back from, I guess, being brave with innovation and, and moving things forward, in, in your opinion? Yeah, I think basically for the yachting industry, it's a very conservative industry. So as long as things go well, things go well, they're fine. I mean, they might innovate, but the innovations are more into looks of the boat. So as well as power and sailing. <clears throat> and the, the, at a certain point, there's some, some boats that with re reverse bows and then everybody wants to have a reverse bow and all these kind of things. But it's not, I don't see innovation there. Um, yet, when it comes to sustainability or alternative uh, propulsion uh, ideas, then the industry is a little bit backing off. If... As an example, Volkswagen tunes their, uh, their software for the diesel a little bit, $4.6 billion of fine. Right. This yachting industry, you just make epoxies, people don't wear masks, it's dusty, it's dirty, it's nasty, there's no end-of-life solution. You blast with a diesel 42-foot boat Beneteau from, let's say, from Marseille to Toulon, or so to, to Corsica, you burn 2,400 liter diesel pumping out stuff in the air. Nobody cares about it. Nobody ticks mm -hmm. somebody on the fingers like you have to behave or you have to do something better. There's no mm -hmm. government interfering. Nothing happens. So why change when you're really not being heavily taxed, heavily punished? Things are forbidden. Mm -hmm. So this industry still could, could move itself in a way where, yeah. where it's still fine. So, so, so what, what you're saying is that the actually until it's maybe better regulated or yeah. made or made to make this change, actually mm -hmm. it potentially won't be pro won't be proactive and, and make the change. No, I think for example, France is now coming up for for GRP boats with a tax of five percent, which makes sense mm -hmm. because well, these boats they end in landfill at the end of end of life. There's no end of life solution, so they will be mm -hmm. dumped. Mm -hmm. So when you when people feel it in their in their purse, then it's time to change. Yeah, that's the thing for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously you're two really exciting businesses right now. You just touched on them there and I'd love to talk about them a, a bit more. It is the ultimate boat company and, yeah. uh, but, but also Exo technologies and, and, you know, they, they clearly, uh, work very closely together yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, um, uh, I'd love just to hear more about what's happening in, in those businesses right now. Well, there's, they're both startups. Exo Technologies is, let's say, is the mother company of of, uh, of the Ultimate Boat Company. Uh, where in Exotech, we do all the research and developments, like all the sustainable things, the composites and so on. And in with the Ultimate Boat Company, we actually build boats out of it with new materials, new hull designs, which are heavily tested for years. So actually what I think it's the coolest thing about the Ultimate Boat Company, because I'm involved in this since a year, and the company exists now two and a half years, three years, is what really attracted me when I when I met one of the founders. And it, he lives here on the island as well. So that's kind of a coincidence. We met each other, had a coffee, and I said, what you do is really brilliant. And he says, what you are doing is really brilliant. I was more into sustainable composites and these innovations. Mm -hmm. So after the second coffee, we said, okay, we have to do something together. For the simple reason, you see many boat builders, they launch a boat, which is, let's say, for 70 or 80% fine, and they're fine, and they launch it. At the Ultimate Boat Company, no. So the boat is tested, it's not good enough, do it again, and again, and again, and again, and then say, well, we have a sustainable composite. Okay, all the GRP out, and now we do something else. So it's a very courageous uh, operation, I have to say. It's it's impressive. Um the, the 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 passion for perfectionism in this company is is insane, and that it works, it works because it's we saw it on the Southampton boat show where, and and I know power boats as well. I'm not let's say I'm more much more into sailing, but when I was on the boat and you, and and one of our guys Colin drove the boat and did 45 knots boat speed, and turned the wheel really heavily. So your, your cheek is almost against the window and the, and the car of the, the boat like on rails. It, don't, it won't wipe out. Mm. Uh, so these kind of innovations, the, there is no cavitation on the props. So the boat is, always has grip. It's super safe. It's super stable. Yeah. And so for is, offshore conditions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's clear. And, the, and these are still based on the, because the, what, what, what you said um, a little bit earlier about the, the designs are based on um, so, something from 80 years ago. Did I understand that? No, right. no, 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 no. The, the design is pretty new, but the, the, the guy who invented it, he did as well the Falconeer bombers and other things, so aerospace, but he was uh, 86 okay. years old. So no, no. Yeah, the, the, uh, I understand. I yeah, understand. Yeah, 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 I, years, no, no. yeah. I thought, wow, yeah. he's really ahead of his time. But yeah, but yeah. how? But how important is it to create these these products that you you are you are creating? Having that insight from uh, you know the aeronautical industry, the automotive industry. It sounds mm. like you know the, 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 the there's some cross industry sort of uh, collaboration going on there with the designs. Yeah, well, basically, if you see what the hull does, is it has a, a sort of hydraulic lift. So that allows the boat as well to, to be for the future for alternative propulsion systems. So let's say heavy, heavy lithium batteries or something, which is not sustainable, mm -hmm. but still. Let's say you can put, let's say, a lot of load in it without affecting the, the, the boat's performance. Uh, when it comes to the automotive industry, well, I always look at the automotive industry as a bench where it, it, it's a very clear on terms of, well, I'm not a marketeer, but when it comes to marketing, innovation, um, efficiency, quality control, all these kind of things, the automotive industry is really ahead of its game. So the, the, mm -hmm. it's, it's really good to not to copy it, but just to look at it and observe it and, and study it as a bench. You yeah. cannot make, let's say, a boat in 48 hours like a Porsche 911 Turbo or something. It's impossible mm -hmm. because the, you don't make so much of boats. The, mm -hmm. the volumes are different. Yet it is interesting to, to follow the trends and, and innovations, what's happening there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we have, you know, due to COVID, you know, we, we clearly have a real new interest in the industry, you know, in mm -hmm. boating and, and, yeah. uh, and, and leisure activity in, in general. And, you know, there's, it's no secret that boat builders around the world are, are ext extremely busy. And mm -hmm. um, you obviously have a very, very unique and specific product. And, you know, what are you seeing in terms of 
customers interest in in your boats are you seeing a new type of 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 customer coming into the industry mm, no yeah well after the southampton boat show is where we actually was our first real boat show where we did yeah. trials with the boat yeah. and we never did it before because as well with the composite we we, we never really went to the market before we know it's 100 percent right yeah. So we are just a newcomer on the market right now, but the responses and the inquiries and uh, uh, and, the, and the dialogues for orders are are really, really, really going up. It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Great news. Great yeah. news. And and the, the exo technologies. I, I really want to talk about this in in a bit mm-hmm. more detail because you know, from my understanding, what what you guys are doing there is not just. Um, Innovative, in in but really there to make a difference in yes. manufacturing and in the materials yeah. that are used. It's it's yeah. it's very driven with a with a purpose of that, yeah. as well as just pure technology. T- tell me, tell me a bit more about Exo Technologies and what guy you guys are doing at the moment. Uh, well, we we well basically, I'm the one who invented the Danu Composite, which is a composite which is much stronger than GRP, which is has more impact resistance and flexibility than carbon fiber. But let's say tensile strength properties are about the same as carbon fiber, so it's actually really strong. Mm. Uh, we invented, we innovated that for years to make it really perfect. But then we start to look at other applications. So Danu Composite, we. We split the patent, what we have, we have a patent on it. We split it up in Exo Wind and Exo Marine and Exo Protect at this moment, because the layup, well, you're a boat builder, the layup and the, the to lay up a boat has other, um, the recipe, the pepper and salt is exactly the same, but sometimes you do a little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt for other applications. Yeah. So for boats, we have Exo Marine, which is the sustainable and full circular um, composite proposition and for wind energy for wind turbine blades for example we have exo wind and then we start to look at it like okay well it feels so tough maybe it can stop bullets which it does so it has ballistic properties up to level three which stops bullets from a m16 on 50 foot with a plate of just 12 mil thick mm-hmm. so so we go pretty far in a, in 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 a, in a proposition in complete other mm-hmm. segments of industries yeah. And I mean, this, this technology to me, it, it sounds just like a huge game changer for where we, where we should be going in terms agree, of yeah, yeah, manufacturing yeah. boats, manufacturing yeah. composite products and, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the sustainable and the circular nature of it. I mean, yeah. uh, describe a bit more about that. I mean, th- this stuff can be, broken down it does it yeah yeah that can be re- well basically if in 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 recycling or reusing mm. there's several steps you can let's say you can recycle but you can as well downcycle and you can upcycle mm-hmm. and downcycling is what you do for example carbon fiber can be until a certain extent can be recycled yet it's downcycled because in the in the process it loses about 20 30 percent of its mechanical properties so as an example you have a mass of a boat and the mass breaks and you will recycle it, you cannot make a new mass out of it because the material loses its strength. So you make maybe a table out of it and inevitably it ends in landfill. In a circular economy, you can repeatedly recycle and upcycle. So that means you make a boat. Uh, from the boat at the end of life, you take the materials apart and you make a wind turbine blade out of it, which is superior to where it initially was designed for. And Mm. the composite, what we have, doesn't lose any of its mechanical properties in any process. So the material stays in the economy and not in landfill. Mm. And the landfill figures are staggering. Just a question, just a question to you. How much kilograms of GRP ends in landfill every year in Europe? Just Europe. I guess. I'm going to ask you a question right now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I, oh, goodness me. Kilograms? Kilograms or tons. (sighs) Hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions, I'm sure. Yeah. 250 million kilo per year in Europe. Yeah. Wow. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You cannot reuse it. You cannot whatever. You can just throw it away. And that's there. And then that is just going to be there for, you know, hundreds Forever. and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of years. years. Yeah. 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 Nobody yeah. actually knows. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So, I mean, so what we have is something which which will which basically it's a sustainable material, so it's not toxic or whatever, just pure from mother nature, hmm. and and can be repeatedly recycled forever, styrene free, no toxics, no incredible, nothing. yeah, incredible, and extremely strong. Yeah, and are you you know how how much interest do you have from? boat builders at the moment kind of looking at, at switching over to the to this product is one question but also is it is it used do you do you, do you laminate with it in in the same way do they yeah. do you need composite technicians to be retrained or no no everybody can start tomorrow everybody who infuse can mm. start with this tomorrow yeah it's that, it's actually that simple yeah yeah and so and, we- and interest from the industry Yes, it starts because we actually now go to the market and, and mm. knock doors and, and even try to... Basically, what we do is first at the Ultimate Boat Company, we at this stage, as we talk right now, uh, we are building a boat for a 10.5 meter rip for military purpose, for law enforcement. So there's also some ballistic properties and these kind of things. Um, completely recyclable. It's the first one in the world. And strong. You cannot believe how strong it is. It's, it's insane strong. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it sounds an incredible, um, offering to, to the market. And, yeah. you know, I really, really hope that the industry, you know, really tunes into this and, uh, and starts to move over. Um, I mean, just coming on to that kind of, you know, what do you, we, we spoke a bit about, um, why the industry isn't necessarily innovating in, in general. Mm-hmm. Do, do you, are you seeing enough of the industry tuning into its responsibility on when it comes to sustainability for, for example? Mm, some, yes, there's, there's some really good initiatives around, which I, I, mm. I really support. And so, but still there's a lot of greenwashing around. So that means, well, I cannot mention the name because that might be a little bit stupid to do, but mm. I see often a, a, a boat builder in, let's say, well, let's say Scandinavia, who, who, who sells a sustainable story. And I replied at a certain point on their LinkedIn, well, how sustainable are you? Because you have an electric motor, it's fine. It's, that's zero emission. That's not sustainable. That's not. Mm. So it's not a sustainable story when you make boats out of vinyl ester and polyester and, and epoxies and, and, and glass fibers. That's not automatically sustainable. So the word sustainability is often used. The good thing about it, people want it. It's a sort of fashion right now because we're, you see with the Teslas and stuff and you got Volkswagen even with a vegan interior where they vegan edition and stuff. So the, these movements are really interesting. Um, yet, the if it comes to to real breakthrough, not impressed yet, to be honest. Mm. There are some, some boats around and some initiatives around with completely made from sustainable fibers and everything, which is absolutely stunning. Mm. And, well, we don't have the answer and nobody really has the answer when it comes to a certain application of yachts. So when I talk let's say with the Volvo Ocean Race or with the Imoca class organization and say, well, what is your goal? Is your goal breaking records? Mm. Do you want to be quicker than 17 and a half days around the world single-handed on a foiling uh, Imoca? Or do you want to go sustainable? Because we can make a boat out of Danube Composite in uh, an Imoca. We can make it in, in Danube, no problem. The boat will be considerably heavier than when you compare it with pre prep carbon fibers. It's yeah. unbeatable. Yeah, that's that's mm. just, uh, the ratio of stiffness and weight Forget it. We, we don't have an answer for that. Mm. So when it comes to record breaking, nobody really has an answer. But if they want to go fast around the world, this boat will go fast around the world, but won't break a record. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So there's in a certain way of in the in the trade, every Jeannot, Beneteau, Bavaria, name it, all these big brands that can start tomorrow with this. Tomorrow, fine. Yeah, yeah. What's that? What I mean, greenwashing is actually quite a buzz phrase at, at the moment, you know? Mm-hmm. And do you think it really comes down to people trying to take a marketing opportunity or yeah. actually how much is it down to just pure educating and education? Well, that's a good thing that you say. I, I, I really like your question here because it's, it is about education. education. Um, like you and me, we are in this industry. We know exactly what's going on uh, when it comes to, to materials of fibers and, and, and resins and, and stuff what, what used in boats. We know that. 
But when I talk to, for example, my neighbor, who, who just looks at a boat from a design point of view, likes it or, or something, he has no idea how it's made, how pollutive it is, and so on. So, and it's maybe last year I wrote a certain thing on my LinkedIn and I tried to knock some doors, but it, the, the biggest problem is that the, what I wanted to initiate is a green label for boats. Mm. Like, for example, if you have, uh, if I go to the, to, the, to the supermarket, you have biological steaks or chicken fillet or something, or mm -hmm. milk, bio products and stuff. So fine. For boats, needs to be the same. Yeah. So which is actually sustainable, which is actually made for, from natural fibers, name it. There's many initiatives around. So it's not mm -hmm. rocket science, literally not. So I think to educate clients, you need, I think the industry like the Mets or, or British Marine uh, should, uh, should grant based on the study how much you use uh, on electricity, all these kind of things, where you get your electricity from, what kind of materials you use, and so on and so on and so on, all documented and get an official certification. Not only the ultimate boat company, it's not, I'm not selling the ultimate boat company at all here, but there are other companies around who actually deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I totally agree with that. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're people who are clearly driving their business strategy around their, mm -hmm. their, 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 their passion for sustainability. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and I actually have this conversation quite a lot with people in the super industry in, yeah. on a similar, on a similar topic around a, a sort of a certification. Um, but actually for, for the yacht itself, yeah. in the same way that you get a, the, the, the green certification for your electrical product, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> same, yeah. The same thing. And, and it, and it seems to me that, you know, if you go right back to what we were saying at the beginning about regulating mm -hmm. yeah. and educating, there's probably a lot more that not just the businesses, but, you know, trade associations uh, exactly. can, yeah. can, can be doing to really, to really drive this. And, yeah. And yeah. The, the challenge is making the switch over to get everybody on, on the mission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 I was in contact with the, with British Marine and they're very sustainability driven in a way so for them i cannot do it because otherwise they say yeah you just sell the i'm not into sales at all because i'm, I'm in innovation and, and technique technique so i'm not mm -hmm. commercial at all but still you cannot have two hats on when you're involved in a company developing composites and making boats you cannot say well we the green label is uh, i cannot be the one who who i can give this thing a push into a certain yeah. direction but i don't want to be the guy who did it mm -hmm. Not because I uh, because it's a bad thing. No, it's a very good thing. But yeah, you need to be neutral in this industry. Mm. But if British yeah. Marine wants to pick that up, I would absolutely applaud that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, glo and globally, it, 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 it needs many British Marines. But um, it's uh, I, I I feel there's more and more people would agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that share the share the same concerns and the issues and and it's brilliant to to, to hear a bit about what you're doing where you're actually mm -hmm. providing the solutions yeah. you know and uh, and I'm really really excited for you and and your uh, and the and the composite and the product um, mm -hmm. and, and everything that Exo Technologies is doing. Thank you. So so you you know you've been in the industry for a, for a, for a while, Jerome. Yeah, you, you, yeah. You've sailed all your life. You you have yeah. a huge network in there. And, and one mm -hmm. of the ways that we like to finish this this podcast is mm -hmm. is to ask one very simple question. If you were giving some advice to somebody considering coming into our industry or mm -hmm. who had had just joined the industry, what would you mm -hmm. be telling them? Stay out. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I would say uh, keep on innovating because it's a, it's an industry which uh, which wears a lot of platforms and possibilities right now to grow. Which is uh, because when I start, for example, with my yacht design company, which I sold then in let's say as an equity into the extra technology and stuff, but that's another story. I call that Tink, the, the T-Y-N-C, the Young Naval Creators. I just wanted to give younger architects, younger people a platform to develop and to create. Yeah. And especially these younger generations, they have ideas. I'm now 
close to 51. So I think I'm still young. I'm not. So newcomers in the industry just keep on smart. Keep keep on. Don't follow the herd. Don't follow the old yeah. people sitting in their chairs. But try to break things through. Try to develop something new. Try to innovate. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot of opportunities there. I'm I'm 100 sure. Yeah, thank you. Really, yeah. really great advice. Well, look, Jerome, it's been fantastic just kind of hearing a bit about the journey yeah, thank and, you. and what, thank you so and what the businesses are up to at the moment and, and what's yeah. coming next. And, you know, your, your, the, 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 the composite product is, is, hugely, um, is hugely exciting and something that I will be absolutely championing to, <laughs> to, uh, to the industry. Um, yeah. I wish you all the luck with it and, uh, you, and maybe, maybe you can come back and, and tell us how it's all going soon. I will, definitely. Thank you so much for the, for the time. Thank you. Thanks, Dre.